Devin is the OG AI coding assistant. You know, the one everyone was buzzing about last year. Well, they actually reached out to sponsor this video, which kind of got me curious. How does Devin stack up against today's cutting edge AI tools? We're diving straight into this one, no fluff to see if it can handle two brand new features on my chat app. I'll then talk about some of the other features Devin has to offer. Let's get to it. I've obviously set up my code bases inside of Devin. And the first thing that art struck me was this is my environment. This is my development environment. Is It's almost like a workspace where not only can you set off tasks, which we'll do now, but you can also code. And you're, you're kind of encouraged to just work again with this environment, this workspace. That was the first thing that differentiates it from things like Jules, things like Codex, and in some ways is better than Jules and Codex because you're more in control. You get a virtual machine spun up to actually preview the code. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's just give this a task and see what we all really care about, which is how good is the AI. I have the front end back end here as separate repos. And what I like about Cursor is that I'm able to obviously add these two spaces to a workspace and then make code changes across the two code bases. I want to add a feature here to be able to edit the last message uh, sent by the user. And when they edit it, it resends that as a prompt to the AI. So let's add that feature. I would like the user to be able to edit the last message they sent to the AI. And I give it a little list here. Once they confirm the edit, this will then be resent to the AI of choice. Now, realistically, I don't think there's any backend changes that are necessary here. All of the endpoints are actually there, but let's see how it gets on. Um, let's just double check a few things. So deep agent, complex instructions at 30% more cost. Uh, asking is interesting. I, I don't necessarily need to ask. I don't think it needs a, a deep agent, but we'll, we'll continue with that. And But I can see that I can add files. I can mention repos and macros, etc. I can upload attachments. Um, so that's really interesting. I can start to actually mention files in here which is what I like to do if I want to very specifically target something. But I'm going to I'm going to put, create a broad thing here and just see what happens with it. And it's going to set that off as my task here, just like you would expect in Jules, analyzing the code base. And yeah, as I say, I'm very curious to see if it is it makes any changes across both the front end and the back end. So it's going to add an edit button that was actually really quick to be fair. So it's going to add, add an edit button to the user messages in the message component, create edit state in message store for tracking which messages, which messages being edited. I'm hoping it's the last one. Modified chat input to handle edit mode with pre-filled text. Update send message mutation to handle message replacement instead of appending. Yep, that makes sense. Bro. Backend already supports conversation. Continue. So that's actually picked that up that it doesn't need that, which is great. It means it's really looking into the code base and thinking about that. So I'm really happy with that implementation, implementation approach. Add edit button, UI controls. Confidence medium, as I need to explore the full message editing workflow and UI patterns to ensure implementation integrates seamlessly. So that seems like it's, you know, fairly confident. It's working on those files. So you can see exactly what it's doing, which is nice. And I think it's important to say as well, this, this doesn't, tr it's, it doesn't seem like it's trying to be like a vibe code tool. It, it's really aiming to be your assistant. It's, it's a, a wonderful middle point between Jules, which is again, just you hand off your task and it creates a pull request and whatever and handwriting the code in something like cursor. So it's interesting. I need to clarify the requirements for editing messages. Should editing be limited to only the very last message? When a message is edited and resent, should all subsequent AI responses be removed from the conversation? No, no. So I can probably jump in here and say only the last message should be editable and all previous messages are re resent. I think that's, a, that's actually a fair question to ask. 
Now, this is interesting and something we'll touch on in a bit. It's uh, suggested new knowledge when implementing message editing functionality in chat applications. So I wonder if I can click that, but it's this idea that your workspace can have knowledge and um, information that obviously helps across the code base. Now, this is something that obviously Cursor have added with, with memories. Claude have and Gemini have with the Claude and Gemini MD files across it. It's really important that we track why we're doing something and saving ideas and, and preferences for the future so that they don't get lost in the code base because this is such a huge thing. But I like that about Devin here. So it's making a plan here with actually, actually reference, found the files that it wants to edit, editing, and it knows what it wants to edit. And then it's going to test those changes and make the PR request, which is nice. Confidence high. I will now proceed with executing the plan. Nice. Okay, so it looks like it's done. It wasn't the quickest in the world. I was looking back through the times here since, you know, 1853. It's now 90. So about 10 minutes it took for, you know, a relatively simple change. But it has got a pull request here. I'm really interested because I know that there is it actually will spin up your changes in a in an environment whether you've something you don't even have live yet Devin will create development environments for you so I'm curious to see that so this is quite cool PR being written so that was a minute ago um so it's quite nice that it's doing that. I mean, I've already got a de I've already got a Verso environment spun up here, so we will we can at least check that. However, I'm curious to see Devin's environment. Okay, this PR really took it up a notch. Uh, we basically got a summary here, really, really nice and detailed. Let's read it. The PR implements the ability for users to edit their last message in the conversation and resend to the AI. The edit functionality is specifically limited to only the last recent user message. And when edited, all previous messages are sent to maintain proper conversa conversation flow. Edit button appears only on the last message. Clicking edit pre-fills the input with the message content. Really nice because I didn't even specify that, but I did obviously confirm it cancel functionality nice i didn't specify that when submitted it's a message replaced the original conversation blah 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 sounds really good um edited state management ed editing message id edit message and content so the message store enhance the message component with conditional edit button critical manual testing required i couldn't test locally due to missing super base environment bars now this is interesting and probably something i need to set up because devin does have the ability to add the environment variables i've added those as probably a uh, probably a mistake on my part so we'll go ahead and we will uh, test that on Vercel. but look here um, and it's giving me a checklist here for to, to make sure that everything's working. So look here, it's actually got given me a diagram of the, the the user flow, which is incredible. I mean, this is pretty hard to see. So this is this is fantastic. Let's have a look. Okay, transparency. I pulled the branch down and I'm running it locally. That's just because I haven't set up the development environments. Uh, I haven't set up preview environments properly. So I've just pulled it down so we can test some of these things. So theoretically, I should be able to come in here and actually scroll up and edit my last message, which as you can see here, I'm able to do so. So here it does, it's pulled that in. And this is actually what gave me the idea because now, I mean, I'm asking for recipes for these ingredients. Now, I no longer have this. I no longer have some aubergine or courgette. And I should be able to hit this. It should give me a new thing i'm already seeing a bug hit. Well, i'm already seeing something i don't want to happen and that is that i have inevitably just want to replace the the conversation from this point onwards so it should regenerate the response so let's make that change and see how we get on okay so we've uh, made that change now let's give it another go let's do this let's go um um Plus, I have paprika spices. So, yeah, 
I mean, we're not quite there because you saw that it was my original message, but then it got overridden by what seems to be the response. So guess that's when you might jump in with your own coding or, or whatever, which kind of leans into this assistant thing. So it's worth just saying then over up here, I'm just looking, we have a shell so we can actually do things that we need to in there um, and observe kind of what's going on. Uh, if we go here, we can actually see the code changes themselves. So it's probably in something it's well i mean there's the code changes here so it's likely inside of here that needs to be edited and then from here as well i'm thinking this is where you can actually test the the deployment if it was working and things like that so um seemed promising but it didn't quite it didn't quite do what we wanted it to do but that's just the way it works sometimes so i'm not too i'm not too fussed on that but looking into Devon as a tool, I think this one's really interesting. You've got Ask Devon and you've got Deep Wiki here, which are really nice ways to visualize. You can see here it's generated a wiki of my website, how things work, what what tools we're using, uh, different APIs and what they do, and and stuff like this. Like this was this was automatically generated for me when i you know when i loaded up my repo which is pretty gosh darn cool it would be nice and i haven't checked this it would be nice if this actually put it back into the repo let's just have a little quick look so if i ls on that um super base for cell i'm not seeing any new so yeah that would be great if this was stored in the code base rather than in Devon, but I'm like it. I like it. Um, and then, and then you've got Ask Devon here, which is just asking about the repo. So you can select. It looks like you can select different repos here, uh, and just say like, what, what language is this written in? I guess you would ask questions like that. But this is great for beginners and people just jumping onto the project. They can look around the wiki. They can ask questions. TypeScript and React, there we go. So with the tool out the way, let's dive into a bit more of the, let's say boring stuff. I was looking around, Devin, by default, we do, do not use any of your data for model training purpose unless you explicitly opt in in the data controls page. So this is actually, I think, really important for people to understand and what people actually care about. So that was something I quite liked about Devin. But also one of the biggest things that people had issue with, took issue with, that the starting price was 500 bucks a month, I think, when it first launched. They've now launched the core plan, which is pay-as-you-go, and it's a one-time fee of twenty dollars and that gives you i think nine acu so uh you, 250 for the team plan um i've forgotten where i read it somewhere but nine ecus and if we knock back so looking here so in that little run there we use three uh 3.07 acus and i've got 5.93 back and so it looks like I get nine in my total billing cycle and we can purchase then additional credits. Now, for that kind of change, taking up a third of my monthly usage, then that probably could end up getting a little bit expensive. But you can see you can run 10 concurrent Devon sessions. This might work for you if you are like a light user and you need that kind of all-in-one package thing. And of course, they have enterprise pricing as well, which will probably scale for much bigger teams. Let's see how much. So we could purchase another 10 for another. Basically, it's, you know, 9, 10 for, for 20 bucks, I think. So, yeah, you have to purchase a minimum of 10 there. So so it might even be worth getting the team plan if this is the sort of thing you're interested in. It doesn't actually say how many team members you're allowed so i'm guessing it's unlimited but one thing i did forget to mention is that you can actually trigger some tasks through things like slack there's another tool called linear which i don't have it's a project management 
kind of tool, I guess. It looks a bit more code friendly. So it integrates with these and you can trigger, yeah, tasks through these, which could be more convenient for some people. And then of course you can ask, you can ask Devin to make changes in the conversation on GitHub as well. So it's kind of fully integrated in all these different platforms. So it's like this ever present AI coding buddy, which is quite nice. Devin introduces a really comprehensive and specific way of working, which in some ways outshines things like Jules and Codex, which offer very simple task-based implementations and pull requests. Being able to view your changes is something people specifically want from Jules. This is a really powerful tool. As I say, a lot more comprehensive than I thought. But with that specific way of working, whether this suits you, I can't answer that question. It might end up being quite expensive to go on the pay-as-you-go plan, so I'd be tempted to advise getting the team plan, but only if you think the specific workflow works for you. Overall, I'm genuinely impressed. As someone maybe a little bit OCD, I like everything being packaged up in a way. It's a really clean and functional platform. It's come a long way in a year. I don't know. You let me know. Do you think you would end up using something like Devin? Or is there another workflow that works better for you? Let me know down in the comments. Thanks once again to Devin for sponsoring this video. Like, subscribe if you haven't already. Until next time, keep on vibing.